at that moment, it was just like, oh my goodness, like, it, you know, brick by brick, year by year, this is what we progressed to, and we finally made it. Coming here, um, after seeing what Lipscomb had done, you know, in years past and making their regional and winning the A-Sun in 2008, I was, I was elated to get to come play for Coach Forehand and come play over here. And, you know, getting on campus the first day and stepping on that field, it was like, I felt like I had arrived. So the two years prior to when I got here, we had, we had had some great success, obviously winning the A-Sun, going to a regional, and then, you know, you got guys like Caleb and Rex who had gone on to play at the professional level. Um, so there was a lot, of, a lot of positive things that were coming out of those two years prior. I came in freshman year and as any freshman would have, you'd have high expectations. Um, and unfortunately for me, in November, I ended up um, tearing my meniscus. And so I actually had knee surgery. Having to sit on the sidelines and watch and then see us win 19 games, it was kind of like, man, I really didn't picture this going this way at all. I was coming back for my, um, I guess it would have been my redshirt junior season, senior year academically. We had just come back from, from having a good year, um, making a run in the tournament down in Stetson. Um, and I had the opportunity to, to be in a starting role that year, and so I, I felt like I was pitching well, come back, and it was actually in the fall, you know, we're out there shagging BP, and I go to just throw a ball in just nonchalantly, and I feel a pop in my elbow. We went in and got it checked out, and didn't really think it was UCL issues. They thought it was more my ulnar nerve. Um, they didn't seem to find any problem in the UCL. So I shut it down, rest the whole off season, and come back in January and start picking up again, um, just to get ready for right when the season rolls around. So I pitch two weeks, three weeks, it's feeling okay, and then that fourth week, you know, it just, from the get-go, it didn't feel right. The tingling in my fingers was, was really strong, and my elbow felt weak. Um, so I got to the fourth inning, and it ended up being like a 12-pitch battle um, with a batter. And uh, we kept, you know, fighting off, he kept fighting off each pitch, and so finally, it was the 12th pitch. I snapped off a curveball. I actually struck him out, but I mean, as soon as I snapped it off, I felt it, and it was just, it was just a dull, numbing feeling in my elbow. Um, and at that, at that point, I knew something wasn't right. That was on a Saturday. Following Monday, I had an MRI, and the results came back that I had torn my UCL. To have the game that you've loved your whole life taken away from you like that, it is, uh, it's definitely, it's, it's earth shaking and definitely puts you, puts you in a place that you don't want to be. Um, and so there were some decisions that had to be made and tough decisions, but I knew I wasn't done playing baseball. That was, that was not the way I wanted to go out. And so I did decide to have the surgery. And I remember just kind of sitting there um, in my room thinking, you know, God, why, you know, why, why does this have to happen? You know, I had, I had some things looking up for me and we had some things looking up for me and then to have this happen, it just, it doesn't seem fair. But it's at that moment that I had to, to check it and realize his plans are not my plans and his ways are not my ways and that's where I really had to lean on <clears throat> taking a leap of faith and realizing, you know, Lord, this is, this is in your hands. That's all I can do is, is trust Him in this situation and, you know, make the most of it from there. And the cool thing about it is that was a huge faith moment for me. And I had no idea um, what the Lord would do in my life over the next, you know, 12 to 18 months. So when, whenever I had surgery and I realized, you know, 
this I'm, I'm done for now. This is, this is all the baseball I'm going to be playing, but I'm still a part of this team. Um, I kind of told myself, like, it's, it's time to find your new niche, and that new niche is going to be um, in the dugout. My number one goal was, at that point, I realized when baseball was taken away, what is something that you want people to remember you by when you leave here? And my number one goal was to just, I wanted to be the absolute best teammate I could be um, for these guys. Those lessons I learned through that year, not pitching, having to sit on the sidelines, are lessons that the Lord has taught me and I will get to carry on for the rest of my life. That, the rest of that season, that's the way it went for me. Um, and we came up one game short. I realized at that moment, walking off that field and seeing Kennesaw over there celebrating and, and holding up that trophy, I, I told myself at that moment that we would be back. Lipscomb's hoping for three out. And then the celebration will ensue. Those last three outs were, I mean, that was a stressful moment. Granted, we still had another game had it not gone our way, but we wanted that game that night. Bouncing ball to short. This could win the championship for Lipscomb. You know, that moment where Grant gets the ground ball, it was kind of like he catches it, check. He throws it, check. He catches it at first, check. Game over. And the Bisons hold on here in the ninth. And they're your 2015 Atlantic Sun Tournament champions. They're headed to the NCAAs with their 39th win of the year. And that's what, you know, that's what our goal was all along. Um, so it was a very surreal moment for me to be able to run out on that field and dogpile with those guys like I had wanted to do for so long. One of the reasons I came to Lipscomb was because of Coach Forehand. When I got here, you know, from day one, I realized, you know, he was a man who everything for him was about relationships. He was one of those guys that he wasn't just my baseball coach, he was my friend. And, you know, he was, he was somebody I looked up to. That moment where we dump the cooler and we sit there and embrace for five or 10 seconds, it was just, number one, it was just a, a thank you. Um, a thank you for the opportunity that you gave me to come play for you and be a part of this program. And then just a thank you for who you are and thank you for what you've done for me and the impact you've made on my life. Um, so it was a very special, it was a very special embrace. You know, that hardware, it, the hardware speaks for itself. Um, it's, that's the trophy that everybody wants and everybody at the end of the year, you know, everybody pictures that moment of holding up that trophy and bringing it back to the team. And uh, I think the, the cool thing about it was, you know, I, I hadn't planned on going out and getting that trophy, um, but all the guys, you know, got behind me and they were like, Will, you gotta go get that, you know, that's, that's yours. This is for you, and I was, and you know, at that moment, it's like, no, it's not for me. Um, but it was that, that brotherly love that, that that team had. That's what it was all about all along. You know, we came together within a two-year period, and you know, all different personalities from all different backgrounds came together, and we just loved each other like brothers. And so to go pick up that trophy and bring it back to literally to what feels like a family. It was just the ultimate celebration. I mean, it was, it was another one of those moments that is just so surreal to just be able to touch that trophy and realize like that's what we had been working on all along this year. And then to bring it and let everybody else touch it, it's like that goal was accomplished. We truly did love one another. And you know, Coach had preached on that. Everything is relational in this life. And we really, we really took that to heart this year. Um, we bonded really, really well. Um, and we got really close in a lot of different ways. You know, one of the ways was we went on a mission trip together. And I'd, I'd say that moment in itself was a life-changing moment for me, getting to know baseball players on a level that you don't normally get to know them on. Um, you learn a lot about their spiritual backgrounds and you just bond in a way that you're not used to bonding. We love being around each other, you know, it was hard for us to not hang out with each other all the time. And so just that bond and those relationships that we built 
off the field, I think carried over on the field, and that's what motivated us because we loved each other so much, we all knew what we wanted, and nobody was willing to be the guy to let everyone else down in that ultimate goal. And so to tell 18-year-old Will, number one, I would just tell him, soak up every moment because it's gonna be worth it in the end. And that's the, that's the whole thing. You can't ever see it when it's right in front of you. But you look back, I look back five years now at all the moments that brought me to that moment, to winning the championship, to playing in a regional, and it all makes sense. And, and to, go out, to go out with the team that I'm fortunate enough to get to go out with. Um, sitting there, having that surgery, having to sit out last year, taking my fifth year, I couldn't answer any of those questions at that time. But now, at the end of it, looking back on all those moments, it's like, you know, Lord, it all makes sense. It all makes sense now. I didn't understand it then, but I do now. So, what else do you want to see? Wait.